Good afternoon. Acting Lieutenant David Haynes here with the Salisbury Fire Department. And I want to talk very briefly in today's training minute about the formula we have up on the board here. This is a basic formula that we can use as driver operators and use it as a memory jogger to help us account for all the things that we need to account for in order to come up with a proper pump discharge pressure. This uh, basic formula is used for an attack engine. Uh, there's a couple of variations we'll talk about in different training minutes for a supply engine, a relay engine, or a fill site. Uh, we're going to stick to attack engine today. As a uh, good driver operator, it's very important that we be familiar with this and work with it and have a, a decent working knowledge of this. If we uh, think of it the way that it's written here and help remember to account for each element of this, uh, whether they're used or not on the fire ground, it'll help us to remember to account for everything we have to to get to that proper pump discharge pressure. As a, a driver operator, we have to remember that the reason we're trying to come up with a good working pressure is that we're trying to get flow to the other end of the line and we're trying to uh, equate that to gallon per minute that we're trying to get to a proper rated nozzle pressure. So accounting for all four of these elements will help us do that. The uh, abbreviations up here may vary if you've seen it in different texts uh, and something's a little different, use what you're familiar with. I've seen different texts refer to the PDP as EP instead, uh, pump discharge pressure or engine pressure, whichever way you refer to it, uh, use what you're familiar with. I've also seen devices referred to as A for appliances and I've seen head pressure referred to as EP instead of HP for, for elevation pressure. So whichever way that you account for it and are familiar with, use that. Starting with the uh, first element is the nozzle pressure. And uh, there's typically four common nozzle pressures that we need to remember uh, for our attack engine. The first one is for the solid stream hand lines, and that's going to be 50 pounds. So anything on a two and a half inch or smaller hand line with a solid stream nozzle, we put 50 pounds for the nozzle pressure. The next one, if you have a solid stream master stream, uh, an aerial device or a mini monitor with a stack tip on it, you would use 80 pounds for that nozzle. Some departments use low pressure fog nozzles. If you use those uh, and have them, use 75 pounds for the nozzle pressure for those. Any other fog nozzle, basic combination nozzle or automatic nozzle, whether it's a hand line or a master stream, you would use 100 pounds to account for that. Uh, very important as a driver operator that you are familiar with your apparatus and know the working pressures of your hand lines, what nozzle is on which line, so that you can quickly establish that proper nozzle pressure and remember which one it is. So those are the four nozzle pressures that we would typically use. For the friction loss, there's a couple of different variations that people have used on friction loss. Uh, a lot of departments will use the coefficient method. If you use that, uh, you would place that here, uh, whatever friction loss you come up with. We're going to talk about coefficients specifically in another session, but uh, for today, what we use in Salisbury and teach at Mifri uh, pumps class is using a given pressure for our hand lines. Anything that's two and a half, or excuse me, two inch or smaller, we would simply account for that using 30 pounds per 100 feet. So whatever that would equate to, uh, we would use that and account for it here. Devices, you may or may not have those in the line. Uh, if you have a Siamese or a Y or a master stream at the end, you would account for those, each device as 10 pounds. That's typically what Mifri teaches. I've seen in other teachings where they would account for the uh, flow in the uh, appliance. If the flow was 350 gallons a minute or more, they would count it as 25 pounds for the device. If it was 350 gallons a minute or less, they wouldn't count uh, anything. The last piece of the puzzle would be head pressure or elevation pressure that we would account for. If we are working in a building, Here's our engine outside, first floor, second floor, third floor. If you're accounting for floors in a building, you would count five pounds per floor to wherever the hand line was or the fire floor, you would not count the ground floor. So five pounds per floor. If you are outside and you're on an engine that's pumping to an aerial or if you're on an aerial pumping to the master stream on the tip, what you would do is count five pounds for every 10 feet, or basically half the height. And you wouldn't worry about knocking off the ground floor. So, Either way, that would be your head pressure or elevation pressure that you would account for. Got a couple examples that we would use on our Salisbury engines. I'll put a little bit of artwork up here to help out with this. 
we've got a working fire in this building over here and it's on the second floor forgive my artwork our engine is over here and there's our hand line with Salisbury's engine both of our bumper loads are 150 feet of inch and three-quarter hose the nozzles are different on the left side we have a fog nozzle and on the right side we have solid stream so what we'll do is we'll account for both of our bumper loads and the difference that we would use for the nozzles for a second floor fire in a structure. The first thing, if I account for all four of these things and get in the habit of doing that, even as a memory jogger, if there's no devices or anything in the line, uh, I would simply put a zero there just to get in the habit again of, of remembering to account for it. So zero, there's no devices. We know that we're going up to the second floor so we would add five pounds for that second floor. And then with the left front bumper load, we have a fog nozzle and 150 feet of inch and three quarter hose. So right away we know that the nozzle pressure is gonna be 100. With the uh, friction loss, we would use 30 pounds per 100 feet of inch and three quarter hose. And uh, we have 150 feet. So we'd use a full 30 for the 100 feet and then half of that for the 50 foot section, which will be another 15 pounds. And we add those two things together, we would end up with 45 pounds for the friction loss. The total pump discharge pressure, we would add all of it together and end up with 150 pounds. The 100, the 45 for the friction loss, and the five pounds for the elevation. That would be the left front Bumper line on a Salisbury engine, 150 foot, inch three quarter with the fog nozzle on a second floor fire. If I took the same length of hose, the same fire, and changed it, it was the right side bumper load instead of the left, we would end up changing only the nozzle pressure, and instead of 100, we would account for 50 pounds because that would be a solid stream handline nozzle. With the nozzle pressure being 50, everything else remaining the same, you'd add it all up again, 50, 45 for the friction loss, 5 pounds for the elevation pressure, no devices, you'd end up with 100 pounds. Quick and easy formula, again, get in the habit of working with it and accounting for all four of those elements, whether you use them or not, just account for them as a memory jogger, and if you can do that, get in the habit of it, you'll remember to get to the proper pump discharge pressure and be able to put that pressure on the line on a fire. That's today's training minute.